This is my packaged up overnight camp to ride adventure biking setup. Since you've probably got a different bike than I do if you have one at all, and since you've probably got a different luggage setup than I do uh, if you have one of those at all, this video will stay focused on what I actually bring with me when I ride out to the mountains, uh, stay overnight, and then ride the next day. Right now I'm a couple of hours from home. I've been looking for a campsite for a couple of hours now out in the woods riding different trails. And uh, it's Memorial Day weekend and most all of the sites have been full. I was able to find this one. It wasn't too bad to get to, but it's not really that nice. Uh, but it's getting really late and if I want to set up before it gets dark out, I've got to get going now. The plan is just to spend the night here, wake up and take my time tomorrow and then do some more exploring since I'm already up by some trails. What you're looking at is basically all of the amenities I need to pull off a trip like this. I'm hoping that this video can serve as an overnight gear baseline or reference for you, and that it gives you some ideas about what you can take with you, or maybe even what you don't need to take with you. One final thing before I start unpacking and setting up camp, I consider my setup to be kind of essentials plus, uh, but what that means to me may be very different than what that means to you. I suppose it's more of like a middleweight setup. I have a lot of necessities. I don't really have a ton of luxuries, but I definitely have more than what I would consider to be a lightweight setup. Anyway, I've got to start unpacking my gear now that I'm at camp. I'll break down my gear piece by piece and explore some of the thinking behind why I take certain things and why I maybe don't take other things. Okay, I've got everything off the bike. I have my backpack, which is really just tools I carry with me if I'm going anywhere more than maybe 10 or 20 minutes from home. I have one of my dry bags, which has basically my housing and my kitchen. Uh, I have this dry bag, which has my bedding equipment, and then I have a dry bag for just about everything else. On top of that, I've also got a tank bag, which I'm using for the first time here. I've got quick grab stuff in there and some water. Uh, both the bag and the tank bag hold all my water for trips like this. And finally, I have a kind of bulky chair. It's actually really small, but in terms of something that takes up a lot of space and I might not need to take with me, uh, there's this chair. I'm going to skip jumping into the bag since it's just bike tools and none of it's really camping related. It's just emergency equipment. Uh, and I'm gonna go into the housing and kitchen bag first. When I was packing up earlier today, I realized I wanted to take a pair of comfortable shoes. So I took my running shoes. Uh, but the problem there was I did not leave enough space in any of my bags to put the shoes in. So I ended up having to unpack and repack uh, just about everything. And now that I'm at camp, I'm realizing I'm probably not going to wear them. So don't really need them. They are a luxury item, but I don't see myself putting anything on other than my riding boots. Okay, there's not much in here. There is a tent cover and there is a tent. It's sort of just jammed in there. I used the bag that came with the tent for something else entirely, uh, but I do have my kitchen in here, so I'll jump into that. I also took a fire starter. It's just some like laundry lint and toilet paper. I, I don't think I need this at all, but um, it is early in the season, so I figured maybe wood would have been wet, but there's plenty of dry stuff around here. I guess I packed more in here than I thought I did. I have this bag here. I've got two towels in it. I'm not going to open it. Uh, I've also got straps where I can turn my tank bag into sort of like a fanny pack. Uh, and then I also have a rain cover for the tank bag itself. Tent poles. I also have a small hatchet in this bag. I like that it's got this back piece for banging in the tent stakes, uh, but I do wish I went with something like a foldable handsaw for wood cutting. I don't really use the hatchet for any sort of wood cutting. Tent stakes. And the tent itself. I'm probably going to have to relocate. I generally set my tent up before I open anything else. That way, when I open my bedding and everything after that, I can throw it all in the tent. Before I set up the tent, I realized I took out my kitchen and never really showed it here. So let me open that and what it's got. It's got these cool little cups that um, I store paper towels in, in a bag. Also folds out tent handles, which is kind of nice if you're boiling water. This tiny orange box contains like the burner itself, I suppose. Uh, it folds out, I'll show it a little bit later on, and it just screws onto a gas canister and, and has a pretty nice and controllable flame. I have a foldable spoon as well. I kind of just wrap it in a paper towel so it doesn't scratch up the inside of the cup. The cup that this sits in, uh, as well as the other stuff in here, which is just this cleaning rag and then the gas canister I've been using. I boil my water in it and I just don't want it scratched up. I don't really know what it's coated with, but I figure less chemical stuff in my body. Okay, the tent setup was a little bit more complicated than I expected. The wind made it pretty difficult, but now it seems to be calming down. 
Also, I lied a little bit. Um, I did put on the comfier shoes and they feel great. Okay, now that I can throw this stuff in the tent, uh, here's the bedding bag. There's not really much in here. Uh, I have this old inflatable mattress pad type thing that I packed really poorly. It actually packs down a lot smaller than this. Um, I just inflate it with my lungs. I don't think a dedicated inflator would take up too much space, but it doesn't bother me too much. Uh, and then the only other two things in here are really kind of tight in there. So I'm going to try to fight this a different way. Uh, so I have the sleeping bag in its own container uh, surrounded in a camping blanket here. So let me, oh no, this is bad. Okay. Sleeping bag, pretty self-explanatory. This camping blanket's pretty sweet. It packs down really, really small. Um, it actually works pretty well in terms of insulation, but uh, it's kind of just not enough on its own. And then there's the sleeping bag. I'm not really gonna open this and show you out here. Um, it's a sleeping bag. It's a mummy type. I believe this one's rated for zero degrees, so it's kind of way too hot all the time. I'll probably go to sleep laying on top of this with the camping blanket and then eventually in the middle of the night when I'm cold, I'll just get in the sleeping bag and I'll be super warm. Okay, I'm gonna go set up my bed and then I'm going to move on to the next bag. Okay, my bedding is all set up now. Uh, as you can see, I have the inflatable pad there. It keeps its inflation really well. Um, I don't inflate the pillow all the way, which is a separate thing. Uh, it just ends up being too steep and I honestly end up using like a sweatshirt or something as a pillow anyway. Uh, and then I have the mummy style sleeping bag. Not a huge fan of it, super constricting and just honestly way too hot for even like freezing temperatures. Um, so I'm gonna sleep on top of it with this blanket and then I'll get cold enough that I want to get into the sleeping bag. And that's just kind of how I do things. Okay, I packed this bag really poorly and it's kind of unfortunate because I'm cold and I took two sweaters, which is a little overkill. Uh, and they are both in this bag um, and difficult to access. So first up, I have a, a food bag. Um, I took more than usual just because I want to try some different stuff and see what I actually want to eat at night and what I actually want to eat in the morning. Uh, everything's probably crushed because I packed super poorly, but we'll get into that separately. This is something I added to my setup after I had done one camping trip. Uh, it's kind of just for white noise. It's just a wireless fan, but it's also got this super convenient light in there. So I end up using it as sort of like a ceiling fan, honestly. And then I have a bag of toiletries, pretty self-explanatory. Um, just anything I use at home at nighttime or in the morning, which apparently isn't much, goes in this bag. Uh, like I mentioned, I packed poorly. I have some caffeine for tomorrow. I doubt you're into ingredients and stuff, but uh, this drink has a really awesome blend of good stuff. Maybe not good stuff, but stuff I like. Uh, and then I find camping alone really scary and I have a hard time sleeping and relaxing. I don't know that this will help very much, but I get these drinks sometimes. They have 50 milligrams of CBD and it's the only CBD drink I've had that I actually feel relaxed after drinking. So I think it really does something. Uh, and I brought one tonight. I have a Kindle Paperwhite floating around in there. Hopefully it's okay. And then something I started doing after a few trips, uh, I, I did a really bad job this time, but I use a dedicated bag for my clean clothes. And then I also use a dedicated bag for my dirty clothes. In this case, it's just a dry bag that came with that dry bag. It's empty because I'm still in my clean, somewhat dirty clothes for tonight. And then finally, I had my oversized hoodie that I've been wanting to put on all day at the very bottom of the dry bag. Okay, now that I've got the hoodie on, I feel a lot better. Uh, unfortunately, it was the only thing that did not completely dry in the dryer before I took off today. And uh, so it's still wet because it was in the dry bag, not exposed to any air. Moving on to my food bag. Uh, like I said, I'm trying a lot of stuff tonight and tomorrow, uh, but something I always have is this particular frozen or I guess dehydrated meal from Peak. Uh, it's got 53 grams of protein, which is honestly a ton. And this tastes really good. I haven't really played with too many other dehydrated food options, but um, this one's delicious and has the most protein I've seen in one. Uh, the other thing is for eating while camping, especially if you're going to be riding and whatnot, 
I would demo one of these at home to make sure it doesn't upset your stomach. I know people who are bothered by these. I don't know if it's the high sodium content or something else, uh, but I know for sure that these don't bother me and I like them. Uh, I don't plan on eating two, but I, but I brought a backup because they don't take up too much space and they're very light. Uh, I'm gonna pretend that these are peanuts, but really they're just candy. I'll have these for breakfast and kind of just if I start bonking on energy. I've previously used Stroop waffles for like mountain biking and whatnot, just for like a little bit of extra energy. I brought two today. I kind of did overkill with electrolyte gummies. I don't really even know why I brought these. They're just good. Brought some more protein as well. I might have some of these tonight. I just figured if I did more riding than expected today or tomorrow, I'd just want to throw in a bit of extra protein and more protein. Three granola bars, one of them super squished. I'm probably gonna eat this now because I was expecting to ride about two hours before finding a site, but I'm maybe six and a half hours in and I went down a lot of technical trails and it was just a little bit more exhausting than expected. So before I make dinner, I'll probably just have this. Uh, and then two packs of fig bars. I'm gonna throw these in the candy category as well, but I just like to have quick accessible carbs, sugar, I suppose. Uh, just easy options for the morning. Okay, it's definitely starting to feel like home for the night, which is pretty nice because I wasn't sure that it ever would. So let's move on to my tank bag. It's super heavy. I've had none of the water in it because I plan on using the water in this bag in particular for camp related needs. Uh, you can see that there's an insulated hose and then the water bag is actually below everything. Starting at the top, I have my just like license and money and stuff and bike registration and all that uh, a tire gauge that doesn't work super well i have a headlamp i really like this thing it's got a magnet so i can stick to like magnetic stuff um, and then it's got different power modes as well as an adjustable beam it's not the most comfortable thing in the world but it recharges with usb-c and it's actually pretty nice uh, i have got a lighter this is a torch lighter it was like a cheap amazon thing works relatively well i filled it just before coming out today I have kind of like a throwaway Walmart knife. It's seen better days, but I don't care about it. So if I have to beat up a knife on anything, I'll use this one. And I've got a nicer knife that I actually don't want to use for anything because it works super well and I don't want to ruin it. Uh, and then I mentioned uh, I find camping alone really scary. The first time I ever did, I maybe got 40 minutes of sleep. I was convinced that every noise was something that was going to kill me uh, and not having service, not having any sort of satellite communicator, uh, I just felt super unprotected. So now I bring a handgun that I've had for just about ever. It's nothing crazy, it's just a nine millimeter, but I do have wilderness rounds. I don't entirely understand them, but they are higher pressure and I believe super good for penetration. In transport, I have it in this holster, uh, but at night I'll probably put on this gun light. Whenever I'm around camp, I do carry this, I guess, outside the waistband on my hip. Uh, as you can tell, there are gunshots in the background, so I guess guns are pretty common out here. And last but not least, we have my camping chair. I really like this thing. It's easy to assemble. There's just two things I carry around in here. There's the, I guess, chair fabric itself, uh, and then there is this mess of poles. When you take the band off, you can kind of just wiggle it around, sort of, and then you're ready to put on the fabric. Thing's pretty sweet. It's a little windy, so I'm nervous about this falling over, uh, but this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment and it was super cheap on Amazon. I'm just hoping that doesn't fall over before it boils uh, and then I'll be ready to dump it in here and start dinner. The fire pit's not awesome, um, but I like to get the fire started while that water boils and then while the fire is going and the food is kind of, I guess, hydrating and getting hot, I do a pretty big perimeter scout for good firewood and usually that lasts me the whole night. So I thought I was recording for the last 
I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so, but I guess I wasn't. Anyway, I've got a good fire going. The water should be boiling for the food soon, and I do have plenty of wood as well. That's going to be pretty good. I thought the wind was only going one way. So with the fire going and dinner, I guess, cooking, good bit of wood, tent set up, everything in there, and the Tuareg, I think uh, it's starting to feel like home for the night. It's gonna get cold pretty quickly, so I don't anticipate being by the fire too long, uh, but we'll just have to see how fast the temperature drops. I think I killed the fire. <clears throat> That was really good. Again, super recommend this chicken alfredo pasta. It's awesome. <clears throat> Where'd I put my kitchen? Now I've got some jerky and a stroop waffle for dessert. I was gonna have the stroop waffle be a breakfast thing, but I uh, kind of want it tonight. And then the jerky is, oh, I got pasta on me. I did a lot more off-roading than I expected to today. Uh, my plan was to take the highways out here for a couple hours and just kind of find a super easy spot along the route. And what ended up happening was uh, every single site was overflowing. I, I even went down some technical trails and they're just full. Uh, and then the trails that I went down and didn't have people, um, they were just way too exposed. There was way too much wind. And I know how camping goes when um, you just don't have tree coverage and it's, it's not great. Uh, so I rode a lot harder than I expected to uh, for a lot longer than I expected to. Um, so I'm having more protein than I expected to. Uh, another thing I've got to do is uh, go through a lot of my water tonight. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I want to drink it all, but uh, my backpack is full of three liters. Uh, this thing, I think, started with a liter and a half, maybe. And I just want to go ahead and 
reduce that weight for tomorrow. Uh, along with just other weight, I, I packed way too much. Uh, this is the most I've ever taken on an overnight trip, but uh, it's also the coldest weather I've had for an overnight trip, so not really surprised I took so much. That, and I had the idea of making um, a video about what I take, and so I really looked at the things I take and ended up convincing myself I needed to take more than I normally do. Um, that being said, I did forget, well, I didn't forget it, but I couldn't find my bug spray, and I didn't want to go to a uh, store to get any, so no bug spray, but it's cold, windy, uh, we're at high altitude-ish. Uh, the watch says I'm at 9,300 feet. And so generally speaking, uh, I, there's no bugs. We're fine. These jerky bars are gross, actually. <clears throat> this company makes like, like more like jerky stick type things, and I'm eating like a, like a jerky biscuit, and it, these kind of suck. I mean, I mean, protein's protein. It's the same ingredients and stuff. That's fine. I didn't really get this as a yummy snack, but it just doesn't it doesn't seem right. I was reading about mountain lions last night. I was reading way too much about mountain lions last night. Just feel like there's been more sightings than usual. Um, you know, they're one of the scariest things when I camp alone. These people are like, ah, oh, one of the best things you can do is stay in a group, stay close together, and not in a group and um, another bad thing to do is like be crouched down low, like almost like I am in this chair. Um, I guess that's like how they like to attack if you're down low and appear small, uh, especially if the back of your neck is exposed. Uh, so I'll probably not be too comfortable, uh, sitting, <laughs> sitting around tonight. Um, <clears throat> The other thing I was reading is that they're most active at dawn and dusk, and right now it's dusk, so I'm kind of like a little spooked out, but the reality is you, you probably won't hear a mountain lion coming. <clears throat> and if you do, it's probably because it's onto something else, or you're hearing the prey it's going after. It's definitely a whole different game. When you get in the tent, I hate it. I just feel like I, you know, I, I have no awareness of my surroundings in there. So every noise you hear, it's like, oh, is that a creature or a person who's aware of my tent and, and sees where their target is while well, I have no idea what or where that is? I have a really hard time sleeping, uh, camping. So today I had less caffeine than usual. I doubt it will make any difference. Um, and then I brought that relaxing drink that I showed you. I take sleep, sleep supplements, and I'm going to take a little more than I usually do tonight. It's really nice that the um, the gunshots stopped. Everywhere else I've camped, I've not heard gunshots for an extended period of time, at least. Close to, I mean, there's not really too much close to this, and they didn't sound like they were along the route that I'm off of. I mean, I often find like uh, bullet casings and shotgun shells at campsites. There's actually one over there. I don't know if it's in frame or not. I'm probably a good two or three miles from anybody, which is pretty cool. The trail I'm down isn't too crazy. Girlfriend knows where I am. She's got a truck that'll make it here no problem if I like don't wake up or something. I'm looking forward to that stroop waffle. Some of this stuff's actually pretty wet. I had to make sure it stays breathable. get a holster with um spot for the light I like carrying on my hip once I put the light on I've got to put it in like my sweatshirt pocket and I've got a bunch of other 
miscellaneous stuff in here. Like when it gets dark, I'll kind of have this around my head or my neck. Uh, and definitely want the light on the gun just so I can highlight any issues, you know? The reality is I, I, I could probably get away without it due to the headlamp, but I like the idea of having that on and ready to go just as an extra light source if I need it. But now when I hear a noise while I'm falling asleep or just wake up to a noise in the middle of the night, you know, sometimes you're, you're way out here and you're in your tent, whether you've fallen asleep already or not. Um, and, and you'll hear people like walking pretty close by. Uh, and I, I don't think that will happen where I'm at now, but I've been in spots before where I didn't think that would happen and it happened. And the, the likelihood that someone walking around in a group has bad intentions is, is very low, maybe. Um, but when you're in your tent alone and you can't see anything and you hear multiple people walking, especially if it's like midnight or beyond, you just feel unsafe. Uh, you don't, it's not a great feeling at all. But when those circumstances pop up now, at least I have a, a chance of defending myself, you know? It's not like you can just scream and, and have somebody there to, to hear you. It's not like you could just call 911 and have relatively quick uh, support out here. Not, not a chance. I mean, if you, even if you had service, you could maybe call 911 and let them know where they might find your dead body. And just spooky. I, I didn't realize it would be like that when I, when I first camped off of the bike, but maybe, maybe I should have. Um, I'd camped so many times before, but always with friends, always with a group of people. It was always just a fun thing, you know? Uh, I don't drink now. I don't smoke now, but you just go camping with your friends and, or my friends. And, uh, we used to just get drunk and have a great night, or what we thought was a great night, I guess. Never once felt unsafe or uncomfortable or in danger or or anything like that. But it was a pretty big wake-up call when I went on the bike alone, uh, out of service, off-grid, whatever you want to call it, miles from people, way more miles from civilization, I felt, I was so scared. I was way more, I, I did not expect to be scared at all. It wasn't, it didn't cross my mind. I thought maybe some elements of the riding would be scary. Um, I don't know, I just, I did not think it would be scary. It did not cross my mind and it totally should have uh, because I was genuinely terrified all night. It was, it was far scarier than I ever would have expected it to be. Even if someone told me it would be scary, it was a big surprise. And it's still scary just about every time. It's not a comfortable thing. Oh, what do we have? Oh, we got a low battery. Let me plug one in um, while it's getting darker and uh, pretty soon I'll stop recording and I'm just gonna enjoy my night. Uh, eventually get in the tent and, and probably read a bit and hopefully wake up tomorrow. Okay, I've got a new battery in. Just want to show you something I really like about the fan that I use, primarily for white noise, but in the summer it does help keep you cool. Um, so it goes in this net in the ceiling. You probably can't see that too well. Um, but if I turn on, I don't know which button does what at this point. It kind of acts like a, a ceiling fan. It's got a pretty sweet usable light. I think that's the darkest setting. It's a little too bright in the middle of the night. So uh, before I turn it on, I'll often point it up and it, I mean, you can't even tell it's on, uh, but I can. And um, yeah, I just think it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's very messy in here, but I will deal with cleaning it up once I'm actually in here for the night. Uh, for now, I just want to be outside and uh, enjoy the little bit of time I have of outside, I suppose. So I've reduced the camera to 30 hertz, hoping it helps with the image quality now that it's getting dark. That looks pretty good. Oh. 
I forget what I was talking about before the battery battery started dying. This is pretty good. <clears throat> but I don't like um, all the crumbs. It is a Dutch caramel and vanilla waffle. Waffel. European snack. These are really high in carbs for what they are, which is a good thing if you want them. I'm seeing some dark clouds that way, but I don't think we're supposed to have inclement weather out here. It's getting pretty cold. Oh wow, I'm covered in crumbs. Let's get rid of these. I'm gonna have to bust out the headlamp soon. Ow! Oh. I need a smaller nose. Oh. One of the reasons my packing was so excessive today is I, I brought way more for clothes than I normally do. I brought two sweatshirts, which makes absolutely no sense. I think at the time was that maybe I'll fall on a water crossing or something while I'm wearing one of them and I'll want to wear the other one. You kind of can't account for everything when you do one of these trips because you'll end up not going. I, I'm, I'm far from having the optimal adventure biking setup as a whole, but if I waited until I had the optimal bike or the optimal gear, uh, the, the optimal whatever, I would never go. I, I don't think there's such thing as the optimal thing. Uh, adventure is just way too broad. I feel like a lot of the adventure comes from not having the right thing for what's right in front of you. And obviously you should play it safe. I, I shouldn't go out where there's no service without like something like an inReach or a Zolio, a satellite communicator, but I don't have one and they're expensive. I'm not gonna not go do things because I don't have that. Last year I didn't even have riding boots and I went and did a bunch of ridiculous rides with no riding boots. and it, it was horrible. It, it was a stupid thing to do, but I, I wasn't going to not do it because I didn't have it. it it's, it's just uh, adopting an amount of risk that you're comfortable with. I, I guess, let me rephrase that. I'm fine with adopting a lot of risk for the most part, uh, but everybody has a different idea of, everybody has a different comfort zone with, with many things and I think I err on the riskier side of things uh, in a lot of, uh, I guess, the decision-making when it comes to the stupid things I do. It doesn't mean I recommend that for anybody, but I know I will never have the optimal bike. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I think the Touareg is the optimal bike for what I'm using it for. Uh, when I look at everything else on the market, I, I don't see what I would have gone for. Maybe a Tenere with upgraded suspension. Uh, I always look at the KTM 890Rs uh, and I think they're, I mean, that's, if money were no object, that's the bike I'd have, but I don't know that it would even be a better choice than the Touareg. So, so maybe I do have the optimal bike, but I don't always have the optimal bike for what's right in front of it. Uh, today I was going down steep descents in ruts that were above the foot pegs on the thing, and they weren't just straight ruts I, it was it was horrible I, I had it in situations that i think most people wouldn't be comfortable taking a dirt bike in and don't worry i wasn't comfortable i didn't feel like it was good that i was in that situation i kind of just got into it and was stuck uh, if i could have snapped my fingers and not gone down down those trails and been stuck in you know those positions i never would i absolutely would have gone back and not done that but i did it was the Touareg the optimal bike for bouncing around in ruts no Absolutely not. My gear is far from optimal. I still don't have pants. Uh, I, I have boots now. I, I love them. Uh, they took a beating today. 
And I was surprised at how many times I felt an object hit my foot that if I were in, you know, regular shoes or maybe less protective hiking boots or something like that, I would have had a really bad time today. And, and I, I totally forgot for some reason, but last year I messed up my ankle so many times, just smashing it on rocks on the side of the trail and uh, just things like that. And I, I kind of just <laughs> kind of forgot. I just ignored it. You know, I just kept going. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is to not o overthink your gear. If you have experience with camping, great. Um, you have a good baseline. Like I, I have a lot of necessities, right? I have, I, I consider the tent a necessity. Some people don't. I consider a sleeping pad a necessity. A lot of people don't. Same thing with a sleeping bag or some sort of like, the reality is if you were maybe stubborn is not the right word, but if you were stubborn enough, you could, you could sleep on the ground with nothing and you'll, you'll probably make it. You might, you might not make it, but you'll probably make it. I would say that's far from optimal, but if you focus on the necessities, the things you need, which I consider to be, what are you going to have for shelter? Um, what are you going to have for, you know, thermo thermal regulation or, or whatever? Uh, what kind of sustenance are you, are you going to have? Like, how are you going to be hydrated? How are you going to get macronutrients for fueling whatever it is you're out doing? The rest is kind of just luxuries, you know? A, chain, a change of clothes is, is luxuries. I have a ceiling fan. That thing's sweet, but a absolutely super far from, from being a necessity. So I could, I could pack so much less. I don't need three different shirts with me. I don't need three different pairs of socks, three different pairs of boxers. You don't even need whatever you need to make a fire. You could just watch the sunset, get in your tent, go to bed and start a new day. I'm totally not going to have enough firewood for how long I'm going to want to be out here. Let's see if I can build a bit of a bridge here. I don't know if this is going to work. Dry this thing out and have that burn for a while. I'm not even going to try to show you, but it looks like there's a huge fire across a valley in the distance. I don't have a good feel for how late it is, but it's cold. It's getting dark. It's about 830. In terms of sleep, I, I'll be fine, but this will be the coldest uh, weather I've ever slept in. It's, it's going to be in the 30s tonight, which isn't bad. I questioned coming out here a lot uh, today. I mean, yesterday too, the, the, the whole time this has been a plan, which uh, has been maybe, honestly, maybe just like a week or two at this point. It's like, oh man, I could have a super productive day, get all my weekend stuff in one day. Uh, I'll have Sunday and Monday off, which will be super, super refreshing. It's, it's a little pathetic how long I've looked forward to having one three-day weekend. And, and I know uh, a lot of people don't get a three-day weekend. I know a lot of people don't even get a weekend. Um, plenty of people work way, way, way more stressful jobs than, than I do and have way less time off than I do. Uh, but I, I really wanted to have a relaxing weekend to kind of recharge because, you know, work's just been nonstop crazy for, for way too long. And desperate for a break. So I've been looking forward to this weekend for such a long time. And I, I think that's why it was really hard to commit to doing something like this, because while a lot of doing this is a break, the work that goes into a trip like this is, I, it's not exhausting. I, I don't, I don't know what the right word is for it, uh, but it's not easy. It's, it's a cumbersome thing to do. Um, today alone, for example, and, and I, I mean, I, I planned for this trip. Um, 
on, on weeknights of, of this past week. I, I knew roughly what I was going to take. I, I found the majority of my gear, etc. Uh, but I didn't really start working towards doing this until this morning. And between... I mean, from, from everything. It, strapping things up on the bike, packing my gear, packing my clothes, just packing everything I needed. I, I probably spent better part of, of two and a half or so hours getting ready for this and and that's as someone who's done these trips before uh, and someone who has all of the needed equipment or at least the needed equipment for the trip they are doing it, it was hard to find a place that had acceptable weather for this weekend but I found one so that's great um, and it was within a couple hours of home another huge plus because a couple hours on the bike it really doesn't bother me at this point Traffic was actually pretty bad on the, the highway, so that was unexpected. It took a little bit longer there. When I got gas before coming out here, I kind of... I couldn't get the tank bag out of the way well enough. And because of that, I, I pumped the gas a way I shouldn't. And then when... It, basically, I just I did things a different way, and I just poured gas all over myself, which was a little weird. Um, I mean, it's fine. I'm fine. The bike's fine. But coming out here was the biggest surprise. Uh... I figured it would be relatively populated, but nowhere near what it turned out to be. Uh, so I, I really thought that it'd be a, a few hours of getting ready, a couple hours of driving, easily finding a spot and, and moving on. Uh, but I, I don't know what the exact timing is, but it, it took many hours to find a spot and going down multiple just like side shoots off the, the main road and even side shoots off of the side shoots. Um, ended up finding a pretty decent spot. Like I'm not too far from where I want to explore tomorrow, but I got so much riding in today that I don't even know that I want to explore tomorrow. Yeah, the, the, the point is it, it's so much work and I knew it was going to be so much work and I, I was doubting the trip the entire time. From the moment I got up, I felt like I did not want to do it. When it's a week away, when it's two weeks away, anything further than that especially, you feel like it's a different you that's doing the work that's required to make it happen. And then when the day is there where you've got to do all the work and the pieces that suck, it's pretty easy to just throw on the towel and, and not do it. Uh, I questioned it so many times when I was getting ready. I thought of how easy of a day I could have if if I just didn't do this. Because setting up camp is, is also a lot of work. So it's not like you're looking forward to like, oh, I'm going to get to camp and everything's going to be great. It, it's a lot of work. It, it takes a good chunk of time. Uh, and that's if you can even find a campsite. Uh, it, but when everything's done and you've eaten and you've got your fire and you've genuinely just got nothing uh, nothing in the world to do. Uh, no emails, no conversations, no no media, anything. You're just out here truly by yourself. I mean, I would recommend going with a group. I, I like to do stuff like this alone personally. I, basically in all areas of my life, I have people all the time. Uh, and interactions with people permanently. And that's a good thing. I am lucky for that, and I, I know that. But you, you tend to place pretty high value on the things that you have a shortage of. And, and for me, that's solitude. And I, I think that's a huge win. I'm not, I'm not complaining. That's, that's a massive success in somebody's life, that solitude is scarce for me, you know? Uh, and, and I certainly know that. But that being said, it's, it's a very foreign feeling. There's no one around for miles, as far as I'm aware, I, I hope. There might be a handful of, maybe more than a handful of animals. But it's, it's just a, a, an entirely different environment than what I am in, in almost every other waking moment of my life. Last year, I, I maybe did maybe four solo overnight trips. Um, three of them were just going out and testing my gear 
So when I went and did the fourth trip, I could, I, I knew everything I needed to have a successful following day. And uh, there's another video on my channel of uh, riding Schofield Pass, um, which is Colorado's deadliest mountain pass, as far as I know. Not the most dangerous, most dangerous I believe is Black Bear, but I just had it in my head that I had to do it. And for the whole year, I, I, I got my Tuareg in early June. I haven't had it a year yet. I have very limited off-road skills, at least on a motorized vehicle. Uh, I've done a lot on like in, an enduro mountain bike and I'm, I'm very comfortable on a bicycle like that. But um, a motorized machine is, is something different and my bike weighs my Tuareg weighs a lot more than my mountain bike. It's just a different animal, but the skills I, I think do translate quite well, like line choice and stuff like that. It's just, you're at a bigger level of commitment with a 500 or so pound motorcycle. And I'm, I'm counting the, the gear on there and all that. But the point, the point being, in terms of solitude, I, I did those four trips last year. That was it. That's when I was alone last year, four, four times I felt alone being in such a it's it's almost it's night and day to be alone when you're not frequently alone and i think that's what helps me commit to doing something like this i need to see what it's like and it always serves as a reminder of how easy everything is for me uh, and i don't mean uh Oh, I'm so gifted. Everything is easy. I mean, uh, the, the people I have, the, the environments I'm in, uh, the amenities I have, the luxuries I have day to day. It, it's pretty bizarre that I've got to, uh, I've got to intentionally remove myself from that to realize that, that stuff's there, you know, uh, it, it, it's not what I expected adventure riding and, and solo overnight trips to be. Uh, but, but they're their own thing. And, and they're, they're a small thing in the grand scheme of all things adventure, but uh, definitely not, definitely not something that was an expectation at all. I, I did, I just, I was like, I'm going camping and then tomorrow I'll be closer to where I want to ride. Perfect. Which is still how it functions. It's just, the, the being alone piece is always very jarring. And again, I think it's, I'm just, I'm permanently surrounded uh, outside of an environment like this, which is awesome. It's great, but you don't notice it until it's gone. Well, it's getting pretty dark. So I'm going to go and change into, I, I also brought PJ pants. I brought a lot. I guess they're not really PJ pants. They're, I, I don't know what material they're. Maybe they're wool. They're, they're like nice sweatpants that are super warm. And on a night like tonight, that'll be pretty sweet. But it's getting dark pretty quickly. It looks like the skies are pretty covered in clouds. I don't know. I just hope I'm comfortable tonight. 8.46. I'm getting, I'm getting pretty cold. I don't know that I want to go in the tent yet. I don't even know how the insulation will be if there's any usable insulation between the, uh, the cover and the tent itself. It does have opening and closing like air flaps. I'm totally keeping those closed tonight. But yeah, I mean, as it's getting dark and it's close to time to just go in the tent and lay down, it's like, oh, you know what? Don't get me wrong. I totally, I totally could not pull it off, but. It's like, oh, I've had a nice relaxing experience. I, I can go home and sleep in my bed. But I, I do think it's something you, you just have to do, uh, dealing with the discomfort of, of things. Well, yeah, I'm not sure um, how much of my ramblings I'll, I'll keep in the final video. If you thought what you heard was incoherent, the rest was a lot worse. Um, but yeah, that being said, I, I don't know that I'm going to follow up with any additional recording tomorrow. I just wanted to cover my overnight camping setup. It's, it's, I think it's really basic. You might not find it basic. Um, but I know for people with no baseline or even people who have done trips, um, 
not really bad to have an idea of what other people are bringing and, and why they bring it because you might find something that you like so yeah anyway i'm gonna uh go ahead and switch spots with you uh this guy's kind of covered now so i don't know probably dump the rest of the fire what i have get toasty a little bit and uh, start heating up the tent that being said uh, if you are interested in more adventure riding videos in the future um especially aprilia tuareg 660 videos i'll have some of those coming uh feel free to subscribe i, I won't upload very frequently uh, i'm going to try to go ahead and do something new every couple of weeks maybe every three weeks but it's obviously hard to have the the time nowadays uh, but yeah thanks for thanks for watching I, I i really hope that you found something about this video and something about the things that i take useful see you later